Hi, I'm Chelsea. Hi, I'm Alexis. And we're going to talk about Zim. All right, Nano Zim. Kind of an interesting one if we're going to continue to talk about varying protagonists and who among Dib or Zim counts as antagonist or protagonist because so far we've had it pretty firmly set up that Zim is the one pushing the action. He's the one with whom we're supposed to identify, even though it's pretty clear he's not a nice guy. Note here, we see Zim working on his pack, and we see it levitate and reattach to his body. We see that he's got mechanical components inside his body. Didn't really get into this, but um, Zim's consciousness is not stored in his brain or anything. Zim's consciousness is stored in the pack. Yeah, I'd say somebody who watches this show casually, that would be more me than you. I had no idea about that. And seeing that little clip of animation just now, Mm -hmm. I can get that indication a little bit, but it's pretty subtle. So it's not like they're really direct about that. But I think that that's a really interesting thing to include in such an early place in the series to show a little bit of their lore of this alien race. Mm -hmm. Later on in the show, Jonin would deliver a note to the storyboard artist saying... Dib is a child. Dib is not Spider-Man. Dib does not do backflips. I really don't know how well that holds up later. And I think it's okay to disagree with the creator of a show. There's plenty of examples out there where people will go, but this piece of fiction actually is a perfect imagery for blank or whatever, you know. What I'm saying is I want to keep an eye out for how well that advice holds up because I'm saying that I don't think it does. Yeah. I, I think that Dib remains about as acrobatic throughout the rest of the show. But that's something I want to keep an eye out, so I'm making a note. All right, Zim is attached to Dib's arm control nerve, having shrunk down, and that's, that's a good moment to show you what to expect from the world and the logic of the show, that Zim says to Dib, and by proxy the audience, literally, do not question me. No, what he's doing does not make sense. And it doesn't need to. And you, it, we're not going to make it. And yeah. <laughs> That's really better than lampshade hanging. I mean, maybe it's just a really good lampshade I was going to say, it is, it's, yeah. a, it's a lampshade hang, but it is a in good in-show lampshade hang rather than a look at the camera, wink at the camera. <laughs> yeah. It, it is not a, what are you going to do? It's a, shut up and listen to us. It's happening. Boom. And it keeps going. It, it, it's a good moment there. Also, we had been discussing the idea of who is the protagonist. And in this episode, Dib is the protagonist. That's for sure. We are supposed to identify with him. The conflict that we would want to watch will cease if Zim wins. Yes. Also, we did note that this is the first appearance of Mysterious Mysteries, and that will play a part later in the show. Yeah. In the episode before this, they showed... Dib having having Gaz as his only friend that that he was sitting with her, but they didn't show them talking because we were focusing on Zim. But today we went over to them sitting together and we actually heard what they're talking about and how they talk to each other. It's a very obvious continuation of their first conversation, which was he drank all the soda and I'm gonna kill him. Gaz puts up with Dib being there. Gaz understands that she cannot kill Dib because he is family. And I'll back that up later. So she puts up with him, and Dib needs somebody to do plot exposition to. And that's not from a writer's perspective. That is from a Dib perspective. Dib needs to talk. He will talk to anyone he can. And at length to himself if there is nobody else. Yeah, I mean, he he lampshades that one too. But, but in all seriousness, it's it's pretty funny to see a lot of the, the Keefe one, you know, to put these two episodes together, you know, back to back is a Zim episode, a Dib episode. Yeah. And you're, you're showing how Zim is interacting with his environment, and then you're showing how Dib interacts with his environment, and also with Zim, because that's a new element in his environment. Mm-hmm. It's clearly something that is becoming so important in his life very quickly, because he finally has something that is a little bit easier to get proof of. So uh, I'd, I'd say the Bigfoot in his garage with, that was using the belt sander should be an easier picture to take, but, you know, Dib. Dib also finally has a real antagonist. As we noted, Dib has probably been a huge bully to all of the paranormal children in his class. 
in his desire to expose them and, and to study these things and to be surrounded by this cool stuff when really he he should be kind of leaving alone. That's the right respectful way to deal with people like this. Zim, however, does not deserve such considerations. He wants to destroy humanity and mangle the world. Dib has a real opponent. Yeah, and in this case, it's the, like, I think that the other people he's run into weren't a threat. They were just going about their lives. And that's why you see Dib as being more of a bully in that sort of a situation. Somebody's just trying to do their thing, and Dib is like, take off that mask, or whatever. Yeah. You know, he's getting all up in their, up in their grill. Eat your grub, Sasquatch. Yeah, exactly that. Love how Dib's icon is already in the HUD for the... <laughs> the, the, the ship that's pretty great and uh, possibly not beyond what professor membrane might do let's be honest i've also designed it that whenever it goes inside someone's body it displays a hologram of that person <laughs> also he's like he's, he's in zim's been planting flags inside him <laughs> I'm sorry, does that not give you the heebiest of jeebies? Definitely. That's awful. He's conquering him like the moon. <laughs> and, and piss you off. And so trivial. Yeah, and I mean, the thing is, like, Zim doesn't know that Dib has a tiny <laughs> ship to go in here and ever see this. I, I can just imagine Zim's, uh, Zim's way of showing this later to him would just be like, I took this picture. Look it, I've claimed both of your lungs. <laughs> like he's just he's just gonna show him like, oh yeah, I've landed a flat an Urkin flag on every part of your body. Well and, and and let's continue to look at that scene because this is what Zim's plans would be. Dib would be brain dead by that point, or Oh yeah, that's Shambly Husk. So he's showing this photograph to drooling husk dib. Who can Cannot comprehend the loss he has had. And also, Zim doesn't plant one flag for uh, to make a symbol. There's a bunch of them. It's just chill, just to just to do it, just the, to, just because he wants to. He wastes time and hubristically leads Dib straight to him. It's a it's a great Zim action that when you unpack it is even more in character. It, it totally is. A lot of times Zim is going to get undone by that sort of an action. And really, Dib same way. Yes. <laughs> just before this, Dib saying, you think that was the original this? He's Those... got a mouth off. Well, I mean, yeah, he has to He has to say to him, you didn't defeat me. Like, he couldn't just pretend to be defeated, get Zim out, and then send his disc. He would be able to do it if it weren't for the fact that that would mean he had to admit defeat for the moment. That, that's a that's a character development because he learns how to how to feign defeat or to take the humiliating way out later. But this point in the story, he nope, nope. This is really our first episode where we get some good um, gas stuff. We've heard her swear vengeance on Div, but those are kind of dime a dozen. We get to see, you know, not only does she like video games, but she's very good at them. She picks this one up right away. And kicks Zim's ass. Yes. I, I mean, there is the, the clear comparison that this is equivalent to being a fighter pilot. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, he, he says to Dib, I've been flying spaceships since before you were born. Mm -hmm. And with that logic in mind that Gaz is immediately better at it than him and by such a wide margin, you have to assume that's, that's her being much more talented at it than him. Oh, and this never comes up in the series, but in an interview, Jonan said that Zim's age is older than any living person. So at a bare minimum, Zim is 120. So that's, that's the Urban lifespan. It's, we're looking in the hundreds of years. All right, it's good to know. Pretty obvious kind of juxtaposition, the way that uh, you get this really mundane little siblings fighting over a game when Gaz either doesn't know or doesn't care that Dib's life is at stake. Later on in the series, Gaz will understand that Zim is a threat to humanity and blah, 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 blah. But for right now, it's not totally clear whether she knows what's going on with Zim. 
Yeah, I'd say that it's probably because her brother has has probably said many a time, oh, hey, this thing is dangerous, this thing is dangerous, or this person is a vampire monkey rat, or this person is a yeti, and whatever, and she'd probably just be like, uh, okay. Actually, when you think about it, that's a, that's a pretty good bit of either proof or a clue towards her knowing that Zim is an alien, because she generally doesn't disbelieve Dib. She just doesn't care. Gaz is aware that they live in a world that is cruel and unfair and terrible, and Dib's trying to make the world a better place and a safer place. I think Gaz just, she doesn't think that anything's going to change. Yeah, it seems like she doesn't care, but also partly seems like she knows that it's not as dire as Dib makes it a lot of the time. Maybe she's like, oh, you're just a drama queen, Dib. Well, I think a little bit of both in that. I think that she does know how dire and desperate the situations are, or rather she knows the consequences of the situations, but she doesn't think that they're dire. Later on, a catchphrase of hers is going to be, whiner, because she doesn't think that what's going on is that bad. Mm -hmm. Kind of can't blame her. The world that they live in is really, really, really awful. Yeah, and I guess maybe Dib just expects it to be better, and Gaz is more of a realist or just more aware of how the world actually works. Yeah, and it's a good question of who's right there. Is Dib expecting too much out of this world? Would he be more happy, you know, if he could just kind of deal with things? I mean, Gaz just dives headfirst into escapism. She's got her games. She's much more content than anybody else. I like how it's kind of unknowable whether, after she's defeated Zim, the game's technically over, but she goes back and removes the spear from Dib's arm control nerve. I guess maybe the game isn't over until she adds her initials in later, and so maybe she's doing that for, like, completionism's sake. Maybe that's something that their dad's programmed in. I would say that it, it, if we're following the logic of of what, it, what of she th- of her thinking it, it's a game, <laughs> she goes in and knows that her objectives are first to stop the enemy combatant, which is Zim, second to take out the little flags and junk that he left in there. I mean, if you're talking about like a capture the flag style game or in a game style, that that would be a good collectible. Exactly. I think a game where you claim territory, like Risk. That's what it felt like to me, that that's what she was up to. Yeah. Was, oh, he left this item in there, I need to do destroy it and yeah, I need to get, my own Yeah, I need to get this territory back and functioning again. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. yeah. For the others, there's a lot about winning and losing and the status that's gained through that. For Gaz, there's this sense of personal accomplishment that really doesn't try to take anything, you know? Um, I mean, she's not trying to take anything other than the fact that that's the win conditions were to take the rest of the territory. Well, it's not because she likes taking territory, it's just because she likes winning a game. Oh, no, 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 but finishing I, the game. Just, just earlier on, we were talking about how Dib and Zim both have a need to, you know, conquer or defeat. I was just saying that as a difference, I don't see that with Gas. She doesn't have the same thing in terms of going after those goals in the same manner as they do. It seems like she does it when there's something to do, and as soon as there's nothing left to do, it's boring to her. Mm-hmm. The two boys, we would assume they would savor their win. For them, the the part that's good about the win is being done and savoring it and enjoying it and knowing you won. But I think for Gaz, it's more of a you finish the task, and then I'm bored. I need new tasks to finish. Wait, I think I've got a good way to put it. Dib and Zim want to win so they can shove it in the other person's face. Gaz wants to do it for a sense of personal accomplishment. Mm-hmm. It's about her and nobody else. Yeah, I'd say that, and also I, I wonder if... This actually seems to come up a lot with her character, that she's bored with the world. Mm-hmm. So as soon as she's done, she's this game is stupid. Yeah. There are not too many people, especially gamers, who after winning a game decide it's stupid and don't want to play anymore. It's after losing a game they shout, this is stupid, and leave. But for Gaz, it holds nothing for her anymore. She's yeah. done, and That's she's all. back to her boring, terrible life. <laughs> Poor kid. We'll talk about the ending now. It ends with a potty joke. 
<laughs> of course it does. The thing is, you should never underestimate um, the silliness of Jonan, who will go straight for a butt joke. In, in all of the the dark... Isn't this one pee? I, I don't know. Well, well, I'm just saying a bathroom joke. It doesn't matter. Well, I don't pee out my butt. I don't know about you. 